Hi, this is Mo Volans for Plugin Alliance, and in this technique-based screencast, we're going to be taking a look at processing a drum bus. And this is actually an electronic track that I'm looking at, so it's electronic drums, uh, but really it could be applied to any genre or style. And I'm working in Logic, but again, you could work in, work in any door. Every plugin that I'm using here is available on the Plugin Alliance website. Uh, you can get fully functional 14-day trials of everything I'm using here, uh, so you can follow along quite easily, um, even if you haven't bought these plugins. And of course, you can upgrade to the full versions um, if you like uh, what you hear. So what have we got? Well, we've got uh, pretty much uh, one, two, three, four, five, six drum tracks, so nothing, nothing huge. I just kept it nice and simple. Um, it's from a real project, by the way. And I've just looped it. I think the tempo is actually incorrect uh, because it was just imported and mixed. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much looped over, say, uh, a, a minute or so, I think. And um, we're working on this one specific section. I'm actually going to bypass all the plugins that... Um, I've applied in this situation, and I'm gonna go through what I did um, in detail. So let's play the track back. You can hear it's sort of pretty chilled. It's sort of like a break. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the plugins that I use. So let's stop playback for a second, and I'll show you what I did first. Now I use something called BX Control version 2 and really this is a, a mid-side um, plugin, mid-side processor and in this situation it's allowed me to uh, ensure that everything under a certain frequency is mono so I know that whatever happened in the mix um, in this group that I'm using here, all the drums below, say, 150, I, I want to go a bit higher than that, 250, 260 hertz are completely mono. And this is something you might do in mastering. And then I've added some stereo width as well. So this is increasing the stereo information in the drum mix. So just a bit of wow factor. Not a huge amount, not, uh, you know, 120%, nothing intense. Uh, and I'll play that back now. So subtle changes at this point. And then I went with some essentially some bus compression. I used the Alicia Empressor and I used a reasonably low ratio and I used a very fast release, which I like to use with drums. It gives you that sort of slamming feel. Uh, and I used a pretty moderate attack to allow the transients, uh, the attack transients of the drums through. So you're not missing out on any of that snap. Um, I then just, you know, brought the threshold down until we got maybe three or four dB of gain reduction. Now I also use the gain reduction limit, which is really useful on the m So if you take it off, we're probably going to see a little bit more gain reduction. But by using the, the gain reduction limit, you see it flash in. And I tend to put it on until it's just coming in now and again. So you ensure that if you want three or four gain, three or four dB of gain reduction, you're going to get no more than that. It's really useful. So even in more intense parts of the track, uh, you're not going to hear massive crushing effects. You know that's as much gain reduction as you're ever going to get. Um, then I added a little bit of gain to compensate for that gain reduction, just to equalise the whole thing. Now at this point, I wanted to add some EQ. Um, but really not to solve any problems. There's really no problems as far as I can see in this uh, in this drum group. Uh, there's really no corrective processing that has to take place. So I wanted to add some additive EQ. And this is really just for the sake of enhancement and really to make things shine a little more. Now some EQs, uh, when you add EQ, they can sound a little fizzy, a little digital, a little hyped. But the MAG EQ4 is excellent at uh, performing additive EQ and is great as an enhancement tool. And that's what we're gonna look at now. It's got its signature air band, which is really um, for adding high-end psychoacoustic style air. And it's perfect for vocals. It's probably what it's most famous for, but it's also great for drums. And that's what we're gonna start off with. So let's get the playback going. And we can select the air band right up to 40 kilohertz. And that's really, really high stuff. Uh, definitely psychoacoustic. So I'm going to go from 5 kilohertz here. And uh, I'm going to just ease in some gain. I can hear extra intelligibility and detail in the top of the snare and uh, the high-end percussion. 
Now, if you find that in doing this, you're starting to induce some overloads, you saw the peak there, you can trim down the level here just slightly. I'm gonna add a little bit of high mid as well. And we can also go for sort of a loudness effect and go with a sub and some 40 hertz. And without. Really great sound, really organic, uh, really musical in fact. At this point I wanted to go ahead and add some effects and some special processing. The twin tube is great for this. Uh, you can just add as much saturation as you want until it becomes distorted. <laughs> uh, but I just went with, you know, about nine o'clock there. So I, I'm guessing around 15 or 20% and some extra harmonics, which in this current setting, uh, oh, it's about 10 kilohertz. So some more high end, a little bit of high end. Again, very similar amounts. And I used the output just to tune because I think that we were getting a little bit of overload. You see that here. And I just tuned it down a touch. And then right on the end, we've got the BX limiter. This really just is tickling um, a tiny bit of gain reduction. Just, there you go. Just like not even one dB, I think, by the time I've finished. Just to ensure that it's not going over, I've pumped the XL a little bit, which is a bit more saturation and makes it sound slightly larger. So let's take a listen to this before the processing was applied. and now with processing applied. You can hear there's a pretty large difference. Um, now there is some other stuff you can do. I wanna show you one other thing um, that you could do with your drum bus, and that's parallel processing. I've just sent a parallel track off to another auxiliary here, and I've inserted a Vertigo VSC2 here. You can see it working already because I've got the send going and we're getting, oh, I don't know, 10 dB of gain reduction, ridiculous amounts of gain reduction. And I'm gonna take the mute off here and just mix it in slightly. If we solo it, you can hear it's completely slammed. And what it does is just sort of add some extra transient, add some extra sort of attack makes it a little snappier. And you just want to ensure that your master output's, you know, not being crushed to death. But that's pretty good. If we mute it, just adds a little bit of extra attitude. Sounds pretty nice. So there you go. What how many plugins are you using? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, plug-in alliance plugins uh, across sort of two parallel uh, buses there and six drum parts and that's working really nicely for me um, that, that's one way you can mix your your drum buses and of course you could do this with any uh, any instruments really you could be mixing guitars vocals synths um, and it's just a really nice way of um, pumping everything up and giving you know a cohesion I think to your mix and uh, it's adding some audio glue so there you go drum buses and how to mix them with plugin alliance uh, plugins and if you want to follow along like i said at the beginning you can get the dem 14 day demos right here on the plugin alliance website um, i'll be back with more channel strip uh, settings and more um, plugin alliance uh, tips and tricks and i'll see you next time cheers